Right outside, he's going to score! McCullough, he's going to take this to distance. Throws it toward the end zone, and McCullough, he comes back to Harrington, who has it for a touchdown! Touchdown, Keenan Howry! Touchdown, Ducks, an 80-yarder! There's a hole, he's going to score! Baby, he's gone! Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Third down and goal from the one. Clemens under center again. Clemens back on the option. Going to keep pitches it back. Touchdown, Oregon. Terrence Whitehead walks it into the end zone. Snap and straight drop back to throw. Rolls right. Looks and looks. Pressure comes. He throws and it is intercepted. Keith Lewis at the 20. Keith Lewis at the 30 and out of bounds. Up at the 33-yard line. And Oregon has the victory. The Ducks are going to beat the Cal Bears in a tremendous comeback effort here at Autzen Stadium on a rainy night in November. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. And wasn't that fun last night at Austin Stadium? Coach, congratulations. A big, hard-fought win where your team did everything you needed them to do to get the victory. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was very gratifying to battle back, to win the fourth quarter, to win the football game. That's what we talked about all at halftime and at our second halftime, the break when the lights went out which I thought was a positive sign. At least I took it that way at the time. So uh, I was very pleased with our defense overall for the entire game. They played great, inspired football, held really three tremendous offensive weapons in check. And then we came through, you know, both quarterbacks stepped into it. Uh, Jason Fife relieved Kellen Clemens early, did a great job getting to our first touchdown. Kellen Clemens came in and made some things happen at the end, which I think was great for him, great for the offense. Our special teams contributed, which I said all along because of the familiarity with the offense and defense, special teams was going to be huge. And then just a, sort of a gut check, which was mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, a lot of people talk about character and heart. And doing this gives that team that character and heart. Next time the team is down, they can look at Kellen Clemens and say, you've let it come back. You know how to do it. That's right. And there are a couple guys like Tim Day who made some big plays down the stretch. Kyle Witherspoon, great catch and maybe, maybe the defining moment in the game in terms of that triple bobble deal whatever but overall uh, the, the confidence the courage that it, that it gives you I think hopefully will sustain us the rest of the year well it was the kind of Oregon football that we've all come to know and love over the past few years as Oregon comes from behind and gets the victory over the Cal Bears a lot of highlights to show you so let's get right to it and a lot of fun night game at Austin Stadium and coach you bring out the yellow top green pants yeah, actually, I had sort of been in favor of that one the week before, but the kids want to go with all yellow. I thought we're going to try it. We're going to we have the opportunity to mix and match now and sort of shake them up. Have to see what you go at next week at UCLA, and they came out looking for the trick play, but you knew it was coming. Yeah, first play, I I know Jeff well enough, and we told him to watch for a double pass or, or going deep on the first play, and we did a nice job of defending. Echimondo still got seven out of it. What a good running back he is. For two more right here, Igor and Jerry. Uh, offsides early, Coach, lining up in the neutral zone. Is that what it yeah, was? Yeah, we lined up twice. At the first time they called, and then they would have warned us on the second one, but they can't. Once they have to call it, they call it again every time after that. Rogers sacked for a loss of five. Kevin Mitchell. Finally brings him down on that play. Third and seven, and Rodgers to MacArthur, and another great play by Kevin Mitch. Yeah, Mitch just continues to make plays. He's one of the true leaders on our football team by the way he plays the game. So Ducks' first possession. Coach, what did you want to do offensively coming out in this game, game plan-wise? Well, the biggest thing was we wanted to neutralize their pressure game because they, are, they had been successful with pressure. They play a defense similar to ours, so we didn't want to expose our quarterback to unnecessary hits. We wanted to run the football. We wanted to get really Rosario going a little bit. First pass of the day coming up, a little foreshadowing of what would happen later. 27 yard line. Wilbert, the blocking back now. Motion back to throw. Pressure comes. He steps up. Got a man open. Caught day. First down. 35 more. Almost gets down the sideline as he goes out of bounds. You know, this is a, a little pass, a crossing route to Tim Day. New nice job with the little play fake there. Good protection. Uh, Kellen has to step up, it's Tim, and the best thing about this is he starts now running with authority, breaks a tackle there, they don't want to get, he's 270 pounds and he can bust them, so again, uh, we saw it in practice this week, he was coming, getting ready to go. Moves it out to the 41 yard line, the big freshman out of the tailback spot. Rosario, Rosario again, he's got a first down, out of bounds up on the Cal 44 yard line. Coach, that's a new wrinkle. It is. We're looking for ways to jumpstart uh, the running game. And Dante is a, is a quality back. Uh, he's big. He's fast. He's carried the ball. He's comfortable with that. We decided to put some plays in for him from the single back attack. So the ball, a 15-yard gain, kind of a Tommy Vardell type for a Rosario. Nice game for him. Six carries, about 35 yards. The drive breaks down there. Clemens incomplete. 
And uh, missing some open receivers early. Yeah, he really did. And it's unfortunate. Here's a big time play. He just, he was a little bit too excited. He just had too much on the football several times. He was very inaccurate early, which is amazing considering what he did at the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, defense getting a big talk from Don Pelham there on the sideline. Bears starting from their, their own 13. And this is when the defense, uh, even though Echimondi goes for nine yards here, they were on the field forever in the first half. And this is a very long drive. Yeah, I think 17 plays. And again, that we, we just, we helped them a couple times with some needless penalties, uh, some offsides, etc. But uh, give credit, Cal credit, they executed well, put together 17 plays and moved down the field, not making mistakes is, is good. From a defensive standpoint, you're okay with that, aren't you? Make them yeah, earn it? Yeah, exactly. I, I, we talked about no explosion plays, and again, make them earn it, and that's a great catch right there, and we're in good position. We're making some tackles. We forced them to work the ball down the field. And still making good plays. Marcus Benz getting a star on the corner, makes a nice hit here. We never know the ball could pop out in a situation like that. Good pop. Marcus improved as a football player in this game, not just with his coverage skills, but with his stacking skills. Rodgers breaks it down. You see the bodies flying over the top for six yards on that play. Aaron and then he's going to look to his tight end. They're mixing it up very well, going to Garrett Cross for 13 yards. Marcus Benz on the stop here as well. They converted on third down. That was a big difference on this drive. Yeah, and we miss a tackle there that, you know, five-yard play becomes a 15 or 18-yard play. This is third and six. Rodgers to Toler for 10 down to the four-yard line. And it uh, wasn't easy for them, though, Coach, when they got down here. Echimondu, a couple of short gains stacked up on the goal line, not making it easy on them. No, and again, our defense yeah. plays with great courage, great heart, and great pride. And, and again, we just needed to make sure we kept them out, tried to keep them out. Didn't even seem like the game had started yet. I've had sandwiches that have lasted longer than that first quarter. Ran just eight plays in the first quarter, and uh, they had the ball for 13 of the 15 minutes. Tough to get an offense on track when that's happening. It is, and, and they put together that 17-play drive. We only had one series, just about seemed like, and and the problem for us is they ran the ball well, and even their, their court and mobility of the quarterback was a factor because he ran the ball, got some bot time, or got some first downs via his, his feet. And things start to change a little bit in the second half. The teams know about each other now, and they're going to try to go on to the second quarter. Duck offense comes alive in that quarter. Jason Fife and Sandy Parker providing that lightning yellow spark. Oregon football with Mike Pilotti rolls on right after this. All right, welcome back, everyone. The all-nighter. Those night games are tough. They are tough. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot of time to celebrate, and the next day starts very quickly. <laughs> yeah, quick turnaround. That UCLA game, again, is going to be a 12-30 game. Doesn't look like it's going to be on TV. We'll talk more about that later. But first, let's get to the uh, second quarter highlights. Oregon against California. And, uh, boy, what a fun game this was. A little Halloween leftover in this football game. And uh, moving the ball 98 yards to the other end of the field, and they get over on the first play. It crosses the goal line, 7-0, to zero. California with the lead, and uh, like I said earlier, I mean, that's a big, long drive, just tip your cap. Yeah, they did a nice job, and our defense, uh, you know, held hanging, they were very tough. Almost didn't keep them out, but couldn't quite do it. So your second possession of the game comes in the second quarter. Whitehead for three, and then Clemens looking for a tight end, and uh, there's another open receiver. Yeah, again, he just, uh, his touch early was not there, and it was unfortunate. On this play, he goes back to throw, and he's sacked for a loss of seven. So a quick three and out, and uh, trying to get anything going offensively makes it very tough on the defense. And, Coach, I thought this was one of the biggest series of the games. They've been out there for 13 minutes. They come right back out there and get the ball back for the offense. Absolutely. And, again, that was the kind of thing we talked about, that we couldn't fall apart if there was one bad play, one bad drive, whatever. We needed to make it happen. This team had not been held under 20 points all year, and your defense held them to 17. Great play by Justin Finnessy. Great play by Justin. He read that, came up to defeated the block and made the tackle. J.J. Arrington gets some carries in the ball game. 12 yards on this carry. That's kind of an interesting story there with Arrington that assigned two letter of intents, ended up going to California, and here he carries, the other one was to Oregon, I should mention, and then he carries for five yards here. So a second and five, and uh, Jerry Matson, boy, he had a nice game. Jerry did a nice job. He's, he's getting better and better every game. He's more comfortable and, and just ranging sideline to sideline, making tackles. So the defense gives the offense another chance, and the offense comes on with Jason Fyatt. Steps up, looks, looks, throws, wants to go deep to Demetrius. There, got it. He's got the first down. This was a great throw because it was a very small margin for error there, but a great touch, good protection, allowed him to set his feet. You see we sprint the one way, look back, set our feet, survey the field. See we have one-on-one -on -one coverage back on the backside. He puts it right over the top, perfect throw. 
Could be a little higher, might have scored further, but again, catching it, tuck, tapping the feet down inbound. And it was a third and long play, too, so it keeps the drive alive that ends up in a score. And then you go back to Rosario, he just carries the pile. Yeah, he can move the pile. He's, you know, 6'3", 240 pounds is a true freshman. Give the ball to him again, and he's going to pick up another seven yards. This one all the way down to the Cal 40 yard line. Can you see more? Tom, the tailback? Absolutely. Let's see. That's really our single back, and it's sort of a group. It's a, it's a Dante group. Fife to Parker for nine yards as he takes it out of bounds on this play. And uh, Sammy Parker getting involved. He touched the ball a lot on this drive. I know that's what you like to see, getting hit a lot of touches. Absolutely. He's a playmaker, and he's the fastest kid in college football. So I think it behooves him to get in the football. And five back to throw with time. Throws it over the middle. It's caught. Sammy with the ball. 20, 15, Sammy. Cut it back inside and down at the 12-yard line. The only thing I was going to tell Sammy there is trust your speed, trust your speed. I think he'd have got around that corner, but nice job by Jason Fife, little play action pass, great protection here, surveys the field, hits Sammy in a little dump pass across the middle, then Sammy goes to work, out races one, and again, he's going to cut back here. The field was just a little bit slick at that time, I'm sure he could keep his feet. First and 10 at the Cal 13. Short wide right, and here's a pump fake, they want to go to Sammy in the end zone, he's there, can he get it? Yes! Touchdown Oregon! It's a great throw, great timing. See the pump fake sort of freezes the defense, but excellent throw, excellent route by Sammy. Sort of held off the defender, used his body. You can see Jason pumps on the way. And great route by Demetrius Williams, too. We had actually two guys open on this, but this is a perfectly thrown football right to the corner of the end zone. Great route, great catch. And nice adjustment by Sammy right at the end there. And Sammy had only scored three touchdowns this year, so good to see him get in the end zone. Yeah, it's been a drought for a while. We need to get him more. Nice throw you see, and uh, this one coming right into your living room. The concentration by Parker, got the hands up, makes the catch, touchdown Oregon, and the game is tied at seven. Nine plays, 76 yards, took 336 off the clock, and we're tied. Echimandu for two yards. Keith Lewis and Kevin Mitchell combining on the tackle right there, and then Rodgers going to MacArthur. Coach, they didn't really, uh, on this pass here, one of their longest passes of the day. They didn't really try to go deep in this game. No, and this is the one I was talking about. We were actually in double coverage there. We did not uh, accomplish it, unfortunately. And that was about the biggest play they got to him. And then on the quick hitch, Arrington loses the yard. Matson just sniffs it out and makes a great play. Great job there. Rogers to Brandon Hall for 12. This goes to the Oregon 46-yard line. They get helped by a penalty, incomplete down the middle, coach. And, and I know as a coach, it's got to be pretty frustrating. Well, yeah, this this one again, it, they didn't call it on that. They call it on that, like that. right there. And that's, uh, I talked with Keith a great deal about that. Uh, those are things that hurt not only him, but the entire team. That's an automatic 15. So the Bears to the 31. Edgemonda picks up three on second down. Big third and seven coming up. Left, McCarthy to the right. Rodgers back to throw. Pressure comes, they got him! A big set by Quinn Dorsey. Quinn did a great job of anticipating and timing the snap count. Just beat the tackle on just a pure speed rush. Comes back in, but he doesn't need to post where we all knew it was him anyway. <laughs> Quick off the corner, and Dorsey makes the sack. Stop the drive. Tyler Fredrickson, it was 11 of 21 coming into the game. He hits a 53-yarder, a career long. Well, that's a big kick. Yeah, it was, and uh, he did a nice job on that one. That's a huge kick for him. He had a big day punting and kicking. He was the punt man as well, averaged about 45 yards on his punting in, in bad weather. Kenny Washington on the return. Oh, I thought this was going, Coach. Yeah, so did I. That right there, again, we just uh, we don't get the block we need, but great job by Kenny. Great momentum shift for us, too. So great field position. See if the Ducks can do anything with it. Five to Parker for 10 yards on the little outside play. And then it kind of breaks down a little bit, incomplete to a Williams here. And under two minutes, Coach, and uh, trying to think about how he might get the ball back, and you still have three timeouts on the board, just didn't work out. No, I thought we had great field position, momentum, get something back, but and had timeouts. We had plenty of time to do what we needed. We just didn't operate very third, long often. Sorry, Coach, third and six, the quick hitter for a couple of yards, and that pretty much does it for the half. Defensive struggle, Coach, maybe because of the familiarity with both offenses? Like, Playing against you know your team in practice. It is. Day. It really is, and I think that's important because a lot of times in spring football and fall camp you get a little frustrated because the defense always seems to be ahead. When they see the same type of offense, the same type of shifts, the same type of motions, they understand the plays that you're going to run. It, it does make it a little bit easier for them. And I, I thought this would be that kind of game. I actually hoped it would be because I felt good about our defense. And I thought again, special teams are going to make a difference at some point. And they sure did later on in the football game. All right, when we return here at halftime, the night the lights went out at Autzen Stadium. What exactly did? 
could happen. Plus, some special information about a special duck player you'll want to get a pen and paper ready for, and much, much more at halftime. Do you like night games? Pretty fun last night. Back at the half, right after this on Oregon Football with Mike Pilati. Welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Well, there are so many little side stories on and off the field last night and made for an exciting evening at Austin Stadium. We'll start it off with the pose, the Heisman Trophy making an appearance at Austin Stadium before the game as part of an 11-week cross-country tour to show off the historic hardware. Fans had a chance to pose with Mr. Heisman and get up close for pictures. Of course, the closest duck to ever getting the Heisman was Joey Harrington at the end of the 2001 season when, in retrospect, he probably should have won it instead of Nebraska QB Eric Crouch, but we'll let bygones be bygones on that one. Pretty neat for the fans, though, at Austin to get an in-person look at the Heisman. The tour is sponsored by Suzuki. Now, lost a little bit in the Bilotti Tedford matchup was the return of several former Ducks to Austin Stadium. Guys like Kevin Parker and Bob Gregory. But the one coach that must have felt the most emotion about the return was California linebackers coach Justin Wilcox. His father, of course, an NFL Hall of Famer and Oregon legend. Brother Josh, one of the most popular players in Duck history. And Justin starred for the Ducks in the late 90s. As you can see, he's doing very well for himself, and he's one of the youngest coaches in Division I football and seemingly on the fast track to becoming a coordinator and then maybe a head coach. Justin was also a star quarterback at Junction City before becoming a duck. And even though he's wearing Cal Bear blue, you know there's still got to be a little duck in him. Great to see Justin Wilcox back at Austin Stadium. Also back at Austin Stadium on Saturday night was Oregon linebacker Ramon Reed, who's had to face the kind of things young men in their 20s should never have to deal with. Reed's mother passed away in October, just a few months after his father passed away, and Reed had to return to California to be there for his family, to take care of some family business, and to look after his younger brother, Lonzel. There have been many questions from Duck fans about how you can help without breaking NCAA rules, so we thought it'd be appropriate to let you know how you can support Ramon through this very trying time. First, if you'd like to send sympathy or condolence cards, you may do so. Let Ramon know you're thinking about him. It's Ramon Reed, care of the Oregon Football Office, University of Oregon Athletic Department, 2727 Leo Harris Parkway in Eugene, 97401. Remember, no donations can be sent to Ramon. That would be a violation of NCAA rules. But there is a fund that can be administered to defray the cost of the funeral expenses the three sons have incurred with the loss of their mother. Those donations can be sent to the Deborah Fight Memorial Fund, CEO Mr. Hunt, House Apple, St. Thomas More Newman Center, 1850 Emerald Street, also in Eugene, the zip code 97403. Any check not made to this fund will be returned. Again, very important to follow these guidelines so all NCAA rules and regulations are followed. Certainly, our prayers and thoughts are with Ramon through this very trying time. Now, moving on, what an atmosphere it was at Austin on Saturday night, a November game that fans will always remember. Of course, whenever there is a night game at Austin, there always seems to be a little extra spark to the crowd. And this was the first November night game in the newly expanded Autzen Stadium. It was expected that many fans might stay home because of the late start, the weather, and the fact that the game was on TV. But Autzen remained packed anyway, and it seemed the 57,000 plus had a great time in the night, despite a steady but light rain. And those that weren't there won't forget the partial blackout that occurred at the start of the fourth quarter when the lights on the south side of the stadium went out. Turns out that a computer that controls the lights and the power in the press box fried out, causing the lights to go. Both teams took the time to head to the locker room during the 23-minute delay. Oregon fans were entertained by the Oregon cheerleaders who did a nice job. And once the lights were warmed back up again, it was time to play ball. The lights coming back on, of course, in Oregon's season. All right, that brings us to this week's internet poll question. But first, we'll start off with last week's Results, what should be done with the current BCS system as the college presidents are looking at this issue right now? 40% of you think there should be a 32-team playoff. Blow it up, is 30% of the vote. And only 10% of you think there should be one title game after the bowl. Notice that keep it the same wasn't even an option. Now, this week's question, while it's fresh in your mind, which do you prefer, your ducks in the afternoon or your ducks under the lights? Go to KZI.com, click on the OSN link, left side of the screen. We'll have the results next week on Oregon Football with Mike Pilati. All right, coming up, back to the action on the field. An uneventful third quarter sets the stage for a dramatic fourth. The defense keeping the Ducks in it until the offense gets on track. More to come on Oregon Football with Mike Pilates. Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone. Oregon against California. Let's go right to the third quarter because I got a huge fourth quarter for you. So let's get through this, Coach, and talk about the third quarter. Not a whole heck of a lot happened in this quarter either, Coach. You started with the ball, but you had a quick three and out. Sign of things to come in the half, though, with your defense. Vincent Strang, end around. He goes backwards. Did a great job. Great. We didn't get sucked in on the play fake and, and kept our containment alleys. Nice job by Devin Long. You see again, fake here, fake there. Give him the handoff over the top, and Devin Long, his initial one to create the stoppage, forces him back in. I think Jerry Matson sort of finishes the deal by just running over the top of him. Big play there, and then Echimandu, who you held under 100 yards. He's been averaging 132 yards over his last seven games. That's a great performance against him. Great performance. Nice play by Eagle right there, but he's a good football player, good back that I was very concerned about. Their defense did a great job containing him. He loses three here. Igor again. How about Igor on the inside as opposed to being on the outside? What's that do for your defense differently? Well, he's a powerful player. And again, I think wherever he is, they have to make uh, adjustments to contain him because he can't be single block. Does a nice job here. He and Robbie combined really to get this one inside. I think our ability to take him inside or outside helps our run support at that point. Do you think you'll go with him more on the inside? No, no, it really, it really depends. It's just going to be something. It's a feel thing. and It's how we perform. Five for two yards as Oregon gets the ball back after the defense does a great job. And then incomplete to Williams here on second down. So a third and eight coming up. And uh, Jason's going to have to scramble out. He's going to pick up five. So you have to give the ball right back to him. Yeah, and you know, this is the first time this year we've got the ball in the second half. And it was a very important for our defense because the offense did not respond as well as we'd like for them to stay strong. The rain starts to come down. Rain pretty hard during the third quarter. Did that have a bearing on the slow third quarter, do you think? Well, I think it made everybody a little bit more cautious about handling the football and what type of plays you would run. Etchemandu for four yards. That's a third and six. And then a pass interference call here on Marcus Benz. We're going to take another look at it. Flag comes in. Uh, shouldn't take away from the good game that Marcus Benz played. No, he did a very nice job. Again, he's just trying to jam the guy off the line, and no question he's got him held there. Uh, had he turned around, might have had a chance at interception on the ball. He's in great position. Cal had four first downs in this game from penalty, trying to take advantage of it. Rodgers to Toler for 19 yards. But they had a penalty, so they had to bring it back. And again, I felt like it was last week, Coach. You went almost into the third, almost late third three quarters play. without a penalty on the three. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I, that's really a rarity. It's amazing how that happened. So two weeks in a row, but they had got their penalties. They had seven on the afternoon, and a lot of them were very costly late. Rogers for 13 on the scramble, and then on second down and 12, Echimandu for four yards, and so. You love to be in those third and eight situations. Absolutely. Again, that, those are not the 50-50 type of runner pass. You can do some things pressure-wise and, and get after them with coverage. Coverage sack there, Coach? Absolutely. Jerry Matson is the one who gets credited with it in the scorebook. Then on offense, Sammy Parker, boy, this had a big chance. Yeah, Sammy got a little greedy, saw an opening. He probably should have stayed outside. When you watch the films, there's a chance to make it a big play if he stayed. But again, Here's we got to run it more to get him the field for it. And uh, the keeper, five turns it up, and he's off to the races. 35, hit, and across the 40, still on his feet to the 45 for the 47-yard line and down. Nice, uh, nice job here by everybody involved. The offense is blocked very, very well. Design draw play to the quarterback. See Jason, he does a great job of setting it up because he shows the pass with his eyes downfield. Then he takes it off. Nice crease right there. And then besides that, he protects the football. You see him trying to get the ball out. Drags it for about another five to seven yards after initial contact. He's a big, strong runner with the football. Yeah, how many quarterbacks are you going to get 10 yards after they get hit? That's a great job by Jason Fife. And then Rosario going to lose three on first down. So the Ducks say enough of that. We're going to go back to the tight end. Behind Rosario at fullback. Two receivers left at the Duck 45 and five back to throw. Tom Stitz throws as he's hit. He's got him in his first down. Timmy Day. Day popped out of bounds. Down at the bare 35-yard line. We well, got us with the same defense in that previous place. So we want to come back and throw the ball with a, a max protection situation. Nice job here. Nice catch. Nice throw. Uh, Tim, and again, as I say, is, is Starting to get some confidence, carrying the football, running through tackles. Takes more than one guy to get him down. So into their territory, trying to make uh, get great field position to maybe get a good shot at a field goal, but a holding penalty here, and that's a critical part of the field to get a hold of. Yeah, and, and again, th those are the frustrating things that we've talked about that we have to remedy. We have to not let allow those things to happen. First and 20, Whitehead gets three. It seemed like both teams had a little trouble screening, although they got a big one later, but uh, you know, both teams run the screen so much, I'm sure you were very prepared for that. They do, and they see him, and, and again, I think we schooled each other a lot. Our defense is on make, taking the screen away. Third and 17, so five trying to get into field goal range on the scramble. He picks up six yards, and 
Jared Siegel comes in for a 53, 53 yard attempt. He had the leg, but just never got inside the upright. No, and that snap was a little bit high, which I think uh, disrupted the timing just slightly. Plenty of leg, and again, uh, we just got to get him more after more attempts. And that was it. That ends the quarter. 10 to 7. Ready for a wild fourth? I'm ready. You know, again, both teams ran the football because of the rain right there, and so the quarter went fast, a lot like that first one. Yeah, the wind died down, the rain stopped yeah. in the fourth quarter. The Ducks trying to do something they have not done this season so far, trailing by 10 with five minutes to go, and the big fella starting to come back. A fun-filled fourth coming up right after this on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back, everyone. All right, fourth quarter. What a day this was. And coach, you talk a lot about that this week about the fourth quarter and and, and having to score some touchdowns in this quarter. Uh, I've talked about it for a long <laughs> time, but yeah, we did make a huge issue of winning the fourth quarter to win the football game. First play of the fourth quarter, quite eventful. Matt Flobert goes over the chain and he pulls the plug out of the wall, and the lights go off. Something amazing. I, I, it, there was sort of a light show too. They sort of flickered on and off like something yeah. was going on. You see it right there, Coach. Uh, talk about this delay. We, we talked about what happened. A computer glitch caused this, but from a team perspective, so Jared Siegel he warmed up. Cal went to the locker room. You went to the locker room. Talk about what happened during this time. Well, I, I was not sure what to do because I didn't really want to go to the locker room and sit down. And it, I thought we had some momentum. It was the fourth quarter, but they said it could be as much as 20 minutes. So we went in. We tried to stay focused. We talked about focusing and visualizing the plays we needed to make to win the game win the fourth quarter, which would win the game. Kind of restart in the second half, a 23-minute delay. Come back with Terrence Whitehead for eight yards on the play. Terrence and, Whitehead. And uh, did not run the ball a ton, but enough, I guess. Would yeah. that be the best way to put it? Yeah, I, I think we're effective in keeping them honest. Terrence had a couple of really nice Terrence runs Whitehead. there. The first one really wasn't blocked, but he made the plays on his own. Whitehead for another nine on that last play, and then he loses two on third and one. So. A big loss there, and they're going to get the ball back again. The rain. This is kind of the last shower of the evening. Rogers incomplete to cross right here, and then coach after this play with some good pressure. Uh, maybe the biggest play of the day for them on the screen. They get 36 yards out of it. Yeah, they, they guys, we we miss a tackle here, uh, right about there, and again, but you've got to play the screen, and, and we knew that they had that play. Uh, we just did, didn't defend it. Ducks were coming on a blitz on that play as well. Rodgers, nothing going here. There's a penalty on Cal, so move them back 10 yards. And that was a big penalty, even though they were able to convert a little bit later. And then uh, Rodgers looking for Etchemandu. And nothing there, incomplete. Kind of hit him off the helmet, I think. It takes a big hit from Kevin Mitchell. They had a delay of game, Coach. So third and goal from the 18, and they get it. Yeah, very frustrating uh, situation there, and, and uh, big play for them. The third and one was crucial for us because it really, I, I thought, in that score, we're going to test the medal of our team right now. Fife, incomplete to Sammy Parker. Ball skips off the turf, and at this point, Kellen Clemens hasn't played for a long time, so are you considering whether or not to bring Kellen back in at this point? Or what's the thought process quarterback-wise at this point? Well, it's, it, we're thinking about productivity, accuracy of throws, and the need, you know, we're, are we going to move the football? Because now we need to score twice. And so we decided, and I talked to Andy, and we decided to make that change. And, and uh, if it's a pure throwing game, we probably would prefer to have Kellen in there, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. Nine minutes to go, and this is when you really need the defense. And they responded. Echimondo lost a couple, then he got nothing. Eagle was there. And then on third and 12, for seven yards, so they have to go back to punt. And so Justin Finnessy is deep for the Ducks. This game, trimming 17 7. Good snap. And the punts away, a boomer, very high and deep. Tennessee all the way back inside the 20. Has it, tries to get it outside and does. And he gets it upfield across the 30. Still on his feet, spins, and it hit. Finally goes down at the 35-yard line. It's a great punt return because he does a lot of it on his own. The key is he protected the football. And I know you've been looking for a spark there as well with Stephen Moore out of the uh, lineup, and he gave it to you. Yeah, I was pleased. I was very pleased with his punt return. Good field position, 6.35 to go in the game, down 10. Clemens comes back in. Time of day, coach, he was out for almost three hours, but he came back in like he was warm as a summer day. Well, I think he was. He had a greater resolve, a little bit greater poise. Had he pitched that ball, the game might have been a little closer right there, but he decided to keep it. That was a huge little third down conversion. Big third down. He gets three on that play, and then Whitehead for eight yards on this play to the outside. So second down and two, Here's and Whitehead. this one is a big one. 
as the play called. Two receivers out to the right. Weatherspoon goes out left. And Clemens three-step drop. Looks, looks, throws over the middle. It is caught. incomplete and almost caught, or was it? It was caught. Weatherspoon makes the grab. And that was a tough one to call because it was complete incomplete. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is a heck of a play, though. We get it right there. We cannot control it. Bounces off a defender. Great play by Kyle Weathers with great concentration. Not very often does a uh, pass touch six hands. That one did and ends up in an Oregon hand and a first down. First down at the 31-yard line. Clements back to throw, three-step drop, and throws, caught by Big Tim Day, loose at the 20. Timmy Day at the 10, inside of the 5, he will score! Touchdown, Tim Day! Big time play here, and again, we needed a quick score, because we had to score twice. Nice throw by Kellen Clemens. They're in good coverage and good position here. Ball's put right where Tim can get it, shakes off the first would-be tackler, gets a chance to get his speed up. He's Rumbling now, and again, this is an amazing collision. Watch these guys just bounce off him. That's 270 pounds, keeps his feet, rumbles into the end zone. Six plays, 66 yards, 216. The crowd, coach, we should talk about it. With everything that's happened so far, the crowd was awesome in this game. They showed up and they were loud. That was the awesome crowd we've come to expect. They were excited, they were there. They kept cheering, kept us in the game. Echimanu for nine, but it was uh, 15 yards to go for the first, so still second and six. They pick up a couple of yards on second down. Ducks use a timeout. On third Sets up down. a big third and four. Motion to the right. Rogers back and hands it off to Echimondo, and they will stuff him. Great job by the defense. I took a chance of not calling another timeout to save a couple. We forced the punt. They, they were trying to run the ball to use the clock and use time, and our guys got out of there three and out. Two really big returns to start each of these drives. Kind of lost in the euphoria of the comeback is the field position that Tennessee gave you on these drives. Absolutely. These two punt returns were crucial in our comeback. All right, here we go. 2.15 to go in the football game. The Ducks trying to do what they have not been able to do all season. Started out, Clemens. Looking for Parker, eight yards to the California 35. Already feeling like you're in field goal range and then incomplete to Weatherspoon on second and short. And then third and short, going for the home run ball, can't get it. No, and, and this is again, that looked like uh, Kellen's first couple passes. Too excited, Sammy had a step. Who, who just wanted to set up a fourth down to keep it And, and they did. Back to throw, Clemens, gonna roll right, throws it out, it's caught, it'll be first down and down the sideline at 20 yard line went out of bounds. Great throw, great job by Demetrius Williams shaking the coverage first of all. It's one-on-one -on -one situation, we're sprinting out to get a little bit more time in the pocket. Nice throw on the run, hits him right in stride and then Demetrius turns it up, shows a burst, almost thought he was gonna score on this play. Let's take another look at it, he did score on a play like this against Arizona earlier this year. But uh, what a gutsy play on fourth and short. Kellen Clemens puts it right where he needs to put it. And uh, Demetrius gets up field. Great play. Well, you go with your playmakers, the people you trust, and Demetrius is a guy that's proven he can make the play. First and 10 from the 16-yard line. Clemens back to throw again, looking for Tim Day. He makes the catch, a tough one behind him for four yards. Use a timeout. Second down and six. Back to throw the ball. Straight drop back. Looks to the end zone. Swings it out. Caught. Demetrius five. Three and out of bounds at the three-yard line. The great thing about this is we get the first down, we're inside the five, we get out of bounds to stop the clock. It's all the things that you could ask for in terms of, at that stage of the game, doing what needed to be done. Approaching under a minute to go, Coach, you thinking about punching it in here, or what are you thinking? We're, we're thinking score touchdown. <laughs> you go to the option, which we'll see a little bit later. Must have seen something on that play, but it sets up uh, a play with a timeout, and then you're going to go to the end zone. Almost had it here with the freshman, Dan Cows. Yeah, it's a great job by Kellen. He's got that ball in his hands. He just can't hang on to it. It's too bad. It would have been a big time play. But again, sets up another pretty good goal play. From the Third, one. 51 Clemens, seconds Sanders left in the game. Clemens. Back on the option. Going to keep pitches it back. Touchdown, Oregon. Terrence Whitehead walks it into the end zone. Well, again, we thought on the previous play that Kellen could and should have pitched the ball. We would have got a better play, maybe even scored. But I told him when he came off, it didn't he like Terrence Whitehead? They did not want him to score a touchdown. He said, no, coach, I can get it to him. <laughs> and he did get it to him. That's Whitehead's easiest run all year, and yeah. it's the biggest. And it was a great job by the left side of our line in terms of controlling Cal, taking out with just one guy to work off of there on the pitch. Nice job in the execution of the option. Perfect play. The place was jumping. The Ducks lead it. The defense now trying to hold on. And they come out with just a few seconds left in the game, and they go right down the field. Rogers across for 28, and it's sweaty palms time.
Yeah, that, that was a, you know, we're in pretty good coverage there. They just made the play, and Rodgers is a very good quarterback, and they came up with a couple of plays to keep it very exciting. 14 more yards to the 33-yard line for Toner, and then it starts to break down a little bit. Rodgers, incomplete. Throws this one, might have thrown it away. I think he did. Save clock at that point. We had him very well covered. Second down, looking. This one he just overthrows as well. Incomplete to Toller. Third and 10, just more than 20 seconds Two on the clock. Right, one left. Rodgers under center. Snap and straight drop back to throw. Rolls right. Looks and looks. Pressure comes. He throws and it is intercepted. Keith Lewis at the 20. Keith Lewis at the 30 and out of bounds. Up at the 33-yard line. Oregon has the football and Oregon has the victory. Big time play. Good pressure by Devin Long. Fighting off, you see him come here, get blocked initially, and then bounce back outside, roll off that to get pressure in the quarterback's face, forcing the throw back across his body. And Keith, we're in good coverage, good situation there. Great job of going up, fighting physically for the football. And then my comment was just get down, Keith, but he did a nice job on the return. I was very appreciative of coming back, making that play. Big defensive play on the field at the end. And they get the victory as they should. Played a great game. Held California under 300 yards on the day. Outstanding performance. And how about Kellen Clemens' first second half comeback? And as the coach said, this team overcame many of the have-nots and provided the kind of spark that can send the confidence of this young football team through the roof. Uh, big ups to the defense once again. Uh, came in, had a good hard week of practice, and uh, carried over in the game. Uh, Simplified a couple of things on defense, so I uh, felt a little more comfortable. And uh, just get back on the field, and we knew how to get a victory. Uh, being that it was Cal, we got coaches over there from Oregon. I mean, it was just just uh, a real big thing to get a win this week. It shows what we could do for four quarters. Uh, we could battle, we could battle. You know, uh, we, we got knocked down, you know, we got back up, and, and we start stopping them, and we start driving the ball. And, uh, you know, then we became the balanced team, you know, and uh, the offense put that last score on on that final drive. And, um, you know, it, it shows character. It shows uh, guys wanting to win, you know, and doing what it takes to win. It's not even a three-game season, but it's about as much as it's going to get. So a win like this keeps the morale high, and uh, gets people really optimistic and working hard and making plays and not playing uh, scared or in doubt that the rest of your teams, I guess. So it's really good for us, I guess, momentum-wise, if you can call that. It's one game, so hope we can build on it. We need, we need it back. Um, so I think we're, we're back in the hunt now. I mean, not for a... Not for a Pac-10 championship by any means, but you know, to go to a pretty good bowl here for this. So, you know, it's it's a big, big time win for us. It's sunk in, but it's not going to sink in too much more than this. Um, we're going to get ready to go for UCLA now. Um, we'll look back at the end of the season and say, wow, that was a that was a good win. Oh, good. I think it'll be a big confidence booster for the team. You know, we made some big plays at the end of the fourth quarter, and that's what we've been missing. So, I, I think it'll be a big confidence booster for the team. And I think. And I think it's a great win for the program. Definitely a confidence game right there. That's, I mean, that's what we needed. A uh, game like that, emotional, comeback win at home. I mean, that's that's what we needed to get back on track. Yeah, we got a fast striking offense. So, I mean, we can be down the whole game and, you know, put some put seven on the board, put 14 on the board. So, I mean, I have I don't like no confidence in our offense at all. So, you know, we did that and we won the game. I think my touch is very important. You know, I think it helped us, you know, with our drives and getting there and making big plays. Uh, I feel real good. I mean, we can't be satisfied with what we did today. I mean, because, you know what I'm saying, in previous history, you know what I'm saying, we've been satisfied with what we did and came back the next game, you know what I'm saying, got our tail handed to us. So we've got to go out there, you know what I'm saying, and try to keep this and let it motivate us, you know what I'm saying, to keep doing, you know what I'm saying, the things so we can feel the way that we're feeling right now. And coach, some confident young men in the locker room after the game last night. Well, some happy young men. You know, the reality is that that, that winning helps make all the work that they do worth it. And I think, again, the confidence boost is important. I thought Sammy, though, made a great point. You can't get overconfident about anything. Now it's this week and our opportunity to go to UCLA. But we're proud of what we did at Cal, proud of the fact they came back, proud that we made some plays. And we'll talk a lot about the, the uh, UCLA game coming up down at the Rose Bowl. Carl Durrell will hear from him as well. But as we go to the break, a late night and well-deserved celebration in the Oregon locker room. More to come on Oregon football with Mike Blotty after this. Yeah. And thank you for playing like we know you can play and finishing the game, winning the fourth quarter, and winning the game. Yeah. Yeah.
Welcome back, everyone. Run a little tight on time since we had so much fun with that fourth quarter. But let's take a look at the Pacton standings after what happened uh, this weekend. And it's put you in great shape. Coach, you can get all the way up to third. Uh, maybe even beyond, who knows, but uh, looking pretty good. And as we look at the bowl tie-ins as well, Coach, I know you don't really care too much about this, but if you win both your games, you got a great chance to be in the Sun Bowl and play a Big Ten team. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad we put ourselves in that position, but I'm not going to worry about it. I probably won't even talk to the team about it. The most important thing right now is us to focus on how to beat UCLA. So if you're a player, forget that segment yeah. and watch yeah. the next segment. We're going to talk about UCLA, and the Bruins will hear from Carl Jarrell as well. When we return here on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti, the Bruins taking it on the chin against Washington State yesterday. But they've got some big-time players. We're back after this. Greg, and he caught it for a touchdown. All right, Coach, UCLA has lost two in a row, but they're dangerous. Craig Bragg's a big-time receiver. They have a lot of, they're very athletically talented. They're making a transition to a new coaching staff and trying to figure out who's going to be the quarterback, Matt Moore, Drew Olson. Got a couple of young running backs in Tyler but Maurice Drew, who obviously we know is a powerful young man. Mm -hmm. Carl Durrell recognizes what the Ducks have done and looks at this as one of the emerging rivalries in the Pac-10. In UCLA, I got to be able to put ourselves in that position now, you know, year after year. And obviously the game with Oregon has always been a game that was always hard fought and it always came down to sometime late in the fourth quarter who won the game. And, and uh, you know, obviously you would love to win all those, but you know, some of those you're not. So hopefully, you know, that type of game is, we know it's going to be that type of game again, but, but hopefully we come out on top this time and we'll see what happens though. So. But it is a great, it's a great rivalry. Well, I tell you, there have been some great games between your two teams. There have been. They come right down to the wire. They've got a great defense, too, second rated in the league, so we'll be in for it. Should be uh, right to the end again, and we'll recap it all here on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Coach, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. Thanks. We'll see you all next week on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti.